Cynthia, how nice to see you. I hope I'm not disturbing you. Not at all. I'm reading letters as usual. Are there any new questions? A few. But you know, it's always so interesting as to why there are so many questions about table manners. Well, that's easy to understand, because most people are at ease in their own homes, but often are confused at a dinner party. That's true. And yet, manners at the most formal dinner party are exactly the same as they are at home. This is a correctly set place at a dinner table. The silver, as you see, has been arranged according to courses. There should never be more silver than there are courses for which it's intended. For each course, you take the implement furthest from your plate. Croutons are sprinkled into the soup. Crackers are served with such things as clam chowder or oyster stew, in which event it is proper to crumble them, if not too many at a time. You will be provided with a large spoon if your first course is soup served in a plate. This is eaten with the right hand, and therefore the correct implement is furthest from your plate on the right. You fill the spoon by dipping it away from you, and then sip from the side. If you wish to take the last spoonful of soup, you may tip the plate like this. If soup is served in a cup, it may be eaten this way. Or to drink the soup, remove the spoon and lift the cup by both handles. Avoid making your little fingers conspicuous. Let them relax. Unlike the large spoon, which is to be left in the plate when you're finished, leave the small spoon in the saucer of the cup. In a house without a maid, the meat is served by the host and passed round the table. Do not begin eating until your food for that course is on your plate. While waiting, you perhaps eat a piece of bread. Break it like this and hold it against the rim of your plate to butter it or on your bread and butter plate, which is always on your left. Help yourself by using a serving spoon in your right hand and assisting with the serving fork in your left. Then place the spoon and fork together at the side of the dish and pass it on. Remember to place each dish passed to you on the table to your left. This provides free use of your right hand. Cut small bite-sized pieces of the eat each separately. Try not to talk or take a drink of anything while you have food in your mouth. Eat as quietly as possible. It is proper to push your fork against a small piece of bread to assist you in picking up last morsels of food. A small piece of bread may also be used to finish the gravy that is left on your plate. If you pass your plate for a second helping, Place the implements to the right and well up on the plate so they will not slip off and also to provide ample room for more food. Salad may be served either as a separate course such as this or it may be placed on the table before you sit down. In this case, your salad is that at your left. If a knife is provided, its blade must of silver or stainless steel. It is absolutely correct to cut your salad with a knife. Properly, every dessert may be eaten with both fork and spoon. If you're served a whole peach, such as this, hold it with the fork in your left hand and cut the fruit around the pit with the spoon in your right. Dip the tips of your fingers into the finger bowl. It is correct to pat your lips with your moistened fingers and dry both fingers and lips with your napkin. Among the difficult foods to handle gracefully is spaghetti. 
It is usually served in long strands covered with sauce and sprinkled with grated cheese. You can manage it best by using the side of your plate as a barricade and twisting it into a bite-sized roll. Practice makes perfect in this operation. If a strand comes loose from your fork, put your fork back into your plate and twist it until all strands are again secured. It is true that asparagus is classified as a finger food, but it is much better table manners to cut the tips and the stalks as far as edible with your fork. It is always better not to risk eating asparagus with your fingers. By using your fork in this manner, you can be sure that at no time will you appear ungraceful. It is always correct to use your spoon and fork for eating any cream-filled dessert. Again, hold it with your fork and cut and eat with your spoon. Managed this way, you will easily control it. Make frequent use of your napkin if dessert is a sticky one, such as this. Fruits, such as two cherries, which you put into your mouth, pits and all, may be eaten with a spoon alone. It is correct, however, to use your fork as well. You drop the pits into your spoon and place them on your plate. However, things as small bones, chicken skins, or any unwanted morsel are properly removed from your mouth with your fingers. It's bad manners to light your own cigarette when none are provided at table. To blow smoke in your neighbor's face is inexcusable. And never do this. Imagine the chagrin of a hostess who prides herself on the brilliance of her silver when her guest does this. And adds insult to injury by being suspicious of the glassware. Blow your nose if you must, but do it inconspicuously and be sure your handkerchief is fresh. And don't apologize. You can't help coughing, but if it lasts any length of time, you should leave the table. Making up a table is not only unattractive, but unnecessary. Whenever you're being waited on, you will be served at your left with the exception of having someone wait on you, everything is exactly the same. Even in a house of greater size and formality, you will not encounter any new rules nor changes in behavior. The beverage which you accept will be poured for you in its correct glass. Unless you have refused a course and left its implements untouched, the outside ones on either side of your fresh plate are the ones you take to plate. As you see, all table manners follow a set pattern. Once learned, you can never be...